Today on Collider Tips and Tricks, we're going to show you a little peek behind the curtain to see how I set up my home studio slash office space. That's next on Collider Tips and Tricks. Collider Tips and Tricks, sponsored by Collider Sustaining Sponsors. Thank you for your support of the Rochester Entrepreneurial Ecosystem and donors like you. Hello everyone, welcome back to Tips and Tricks. My name is Jamie Sunsbach, and we are delighted today to do something that I've wanted to do probably since episode one, but I figured this is the right time to do it. And that's to show you my current setup for my studio here in my basement of my home, um, as well as kind of how I do my work in, in a very, very confined space, which we hope one day to be able to translate into a little bit bigger space in our co-working space. So let's take a look. So for many of you, hopefully this isn't too shocking. This is actually the setup that I'm using to do all of my video production as well as my work for the day. So you can see that this is really not a studio that was made to last very long, um, hopefully only for a couple of months, uh, but I've learned a ton from this tiny little production space. So this space measures about uh, 42 square feet. And what I've tried to do is challenge myself to pack as much technology into one space to see if we could recreate this when the Collider co-working space opens. So you can see that uh, all of this is driven by uh, the iMac computer towards the front. And you can see uh, some lighting as well as uh, audio equipment that uh, we've set up for the purposes of our video casts as well as the screen in the back that's been amazing to be able to get the word out about all of the great stuff we're doing through the Collider Foundation. When I first started out, I had that, you can see the wall behind me was kind of this spongy, kind of, um, I don't know, old 90s setup. Uh, I was not a big fan of it. Uh, most people didn't really care when I talked to them, or I could see that at least they were doing a good job pretending they didn't care, but it bugged the heck out of me. So I just scrounged around my basement and I found an old outdoor movie screen that we've used on several occasions to show movies outside when it's nice out. And I thought, well, maybe I should just put that up. A number of YouTube videos that I've looked at pointed out that white isn't probably the right color to put up. I started looking at backdrops on Amazon and what I found was that there was just way too many colors, choices, and they weren't necessarily the cheapest things in the world and many required a, f a full frame uh, to be sort of erected around your set. So I decided to go with the movie screen that I had that had built-in grommets and could easily be tacked up on the wall behind me without too much effort. But then it was a pretty stark uh, kind of boring white so what I wanted to do was give it some light so I later added uh, some great LED lights that I'll talk about in just a minute. So before we go around to the opposite side I wanted to take a second to show you one little innovation that I managed to come up with uh, during this time and no it is not bad cable management which you can see in this photo. I wanted to have a little better cable management but at the end of the day uh, this is an experiment, and it's easier just to move stuff super fast. So once it gets into place, I think, you know, obviously cable management. But we're not here to talk about cable management. We're here to talk about these really cool green LED lights. So I wanted something to be able to let people know when I w in my household when I was busy or when I was on a call. So I came up with this idea of an LED lighting system, uh, green for I'm free, blue for I'm working, and red for I'm on a call, do not disturb. And that's been really helpful uh, in my family as well as uh, just to kind of give myself a sense of uh, when I should be really focusing and, and paying attention. You can find many of these LED strip lights on Amazon, which is where I got mine. Uh, if you just search for LED strip lights, I just basically found the cheapest ones I could because I figured that they didn't need to be the world's best. Uh, so I found this for around $17. So moving around to the back side, you can see uh, essentially a Vizio TV. I believe this is a Vizio 42-inch display. 
that has had many different lives inside of our co-working space and now serves as sort of that visual backdrop for our, the production studio. And I really wanted something like this because it was it was really a great help to be able to project images behind me, whether for promotional purposes or just to really illustrate something without having to share my screen with everyone, which I find very annoying and seems to always take over someone's screen. I wanted something that was just a little more subtle and a little more uh, fun to use. And this is sort of the highlight, I think, so far for me for the studio has been this Rode Procaster. We originally purchased a double set of these Rode Procasters to use in our DMC podcast studio in Collider and has now been repurposed temporarily as really the main sound source of what I'm doing here in my production studio. We originally purchased these for about $350 on Amazon, and it came as a set. So you got the Procaster mic, you got the shock mount, and you got the arm, which, all of which have been phenomenal. And I think we paid probably 5 or $10 more for the cabling. This microphone has really been a phenomenal purchase, and I can't recommend uh, this Rode Procaster more to people as a good mic to start out with podcasting, or doing video production work. So another huge thing when you're talking about microphones is obviously this is an analog device on the microphone. The signal is analog and it needs to be converted to digital to be able to get into your computer. So I purchased a PreSonos AudioBox USB 96. Uh, thank you Zach Zern of Carpet Booth Studios for jumping in to help me with my audio selection. So you can see here that you're plugging an XLR mic into the front and it's going out the back uh, USB that you can then connect to the iMac. For me, this is the best way and the lowest cost way at around $100 to be able to take the superior sound of this mic and be able to translate it quickly and easily into the iMac. So the studio really is controlled by the iMac, and this is the iMac that sat at my desk at the front of Collider with just actually, in many ways, using the iMac for what it's probably better for, which is not a reception desk computer, but really a full-fledged uh, video and audio production studio. Early on, I noticed that the more work I did, the more it seemed like I was having to choose which window I would view. So very early on, I would say that within day one or two of being here at home, I purchased an Asus 27-inch uh, monitor. Now, this is not a full, you know, 4K monitor or anything. It's like a 1080p, So, but it just, it served as a place to put a lot of useful information and toolbars while I was working on a multitude of projects. If people want to know what I use for video editing, I'm using iMovie, you know, the stock Apple product, as well as using GarageBand to record all of my sound. One thing I learned very early on is do not use QuickTime for your audio recording. QuickTime will actually record in one channel. So if you play that back, as I did my, my very first uh, Tips and Tricks podcast, you'll see it, it's coming out of one speaker on one side. It's not recording in mono. Many other applications, including Apple's own GarageBand, understand this and are able to compensate without you having to do any other post-production work. Another big question I get all the time is around what video camera I'm using. And I have tried a multitude of different ways uh, to look better on many of my videos. Right now, for web conferencing or any of the Zoom tips and tricks that you've seen, I'm using the Logitech HD 1080p webcam. You can pick these up for about $60 on Amazon.com. The Apple EyeSight FaceTime HD camera is okay, but I find that the Logitech camera has a much better wide angle as well as color correction and autofocus. So I definitely am using this as my daily driver when it comes to video production. How I'm doing a lot of my uh, promos and outros for a lot of my videos is a little bit different. So for that, instead of, uh, I've had a couple of people reach out and say, wow, you have a really expensive uh, Canon or Nikon camera that you're using. And, and the answer is no, I'm actually using the, what I call the business end of my iPhone, which is 
the back facing camera, not the front front facing camera, and using a software called Filmic Pro. Filmic Pro is a great way, especially if you have an iPad, to do a lot of solo shoots. You can position your iPhone on a tripod, and then you can use Filmic Pro to actually go in and start the filming and stop the filming. So I think uh, for people just getting into video production, uh, maybe the best camera that they really need is the one in their pockets. The iPhone records at 4K, which is more than enough uh, to get your video to YouTube and look very, very good. So for lighting, I'm using a combination of two things. One was were these great LED uh, newer and newer uh, lights. You can get them for about $170 or so on Amazon. They come as a match set, so there are two of them. Uh, they come with tripods as, as well as AC power. So it's a great way to be able to set up lights pretty much wherever you want. And again, this was something that we purchased for our DMC podcast studio and has served me very well here in my home studio. As I mentioned before, I wanted to get more color behind me. And so I found a really great deal on Amazon for two... Uh, LED lights that were colored LEDs. So it gives you the opportunity to be able to really put project whatever color you want behind you or around you. And at $38, these LED floodlights uh, are fantastic. They're 100 watts. Um, they're controllable through my smartphone. And they're just a great way to get really the color that you want behind you whenever you want it. So that was a little bit about how I make my space work for me. What about you? Do you have a great space design or little tips and tricks within your desk workflow that you would like to see on our show? Well, definitely uh, reply in the comments or shoot me an email at hello at collider.mn. We would love to hear any suggestions you have to make everyone's workplace just a little bit more productive. So for Collider Tips and Tricks, I'm Jamie Sunsbach. Have a great day.